I'm Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, and today we're going to be talking about profiles, patient profiles. And I'm not talking about profiles, I'm not talking about your profile on Tinder or, you know, Instagram. I'm talking about like the silhouette, the way your face looks from the side. So it's really important that you know something about profiles when you set up your orthodontic case. And it doesn't matter if you're talking about braces, six month smiles, Invisalign, clear correct, white label aligners, phase one, any type of orthodontics that you're doing, you need to be cognizant and be mindful as to what the impact you're gonna have with the profile is gonna be not only short term, but also long term. And I'll be really honest, this really comes with experience and it also comes with reading a lot understanding what is the long-term and short-term consequences of this movement that you're going to do and I really find in when I work with um, general and pediatric dentists for the most part they have no idea <laughs> they really have no idea so um, Invisalign has no idea. These technicians have no idea. I guarantee you they are not even thinking about this. They're literally just playing a puzzle. They're putting a puzzle together through a software company. They're playing a video game. And I don't think you realize sometimes the negative or positive impacts that you can have. But if you do not bring it up at the beginning with your patient, hey, we can do this or we can do it this way. But if we do it this way, it may make your lips come forward. If you do it this way, it may make your lips come back. Let's talk about this and see how you feel about it. And a lot of times this is very cosmetic, but it also can be functional, you know? So, ah, so many things to think about. So I'm just gonna kind of take you through my thought process with a few of these patients that I've got here. Um, just talking about what I see, what I'm thinking, what would look good for this patient. Remember, it's all about scripting. So you have to use the right verbiage or you might offend a patient. And what offends one patient may not offend another patient. So feel free to connect with us if you need help scripting a case. By scripting, I mean saying the right words to pre present the treatment plan. There's a lot of scripting that goes on from the doctor, but also from the treatment coordinator in selling that case. And if you do it the wrong way, you can blow a case easily or you can sell a case. So um, again, this is just something that we do at Straight Smile Solutions every day to help doctors. Okay, so we got a couple, I've got about four or five patients here I'm gonna show you. So this first one, um, clearly um, some of the, I'm gonna tell you some of the words I would use. Um, first of all, I always bring up profiles with my patient, even if I don't think it's gonna impact a profile, I talk about profiles because I wanna know if they don't, would like to improve their profile or if they're anticipating that the orthodontics will change their profile, you wanna know on the front end because a lot of times patients think what you're gonna do is gonna improve their profile. And if you don't do it, they get upset and now you might have to give a refund. So better to talk about it and put it into your treatment plan and grab that signature. So for this patient, keep in mind that many different ethnicities are gonna have stronger features and that's totally fine. I always like to use the word you know, strong or enhanced, um, always use a positive word. That's totally fine. Um, and that works for a lot of people and that's great. So, but we want to make sure like for this patient's, um, with the treatment, we want to make sure because she does have some very prominent, strong features, we want to make sure that what we do enhances it. So no matter what, if let's say this patient had a ton of crowding, I would never want to pull teeth on this patient because if I pulled teeth on this patient, the lips would go back. And even as a patient ages more, they come back even more and it would look very dished in, concave would be the word. Um, I mean, now I'm, I'm not saying it the way I'd say to a patient, but you know, scooped out, um, uh, witch-like, I mean, would be a word. I mean, it's, it's you're not gonna use these words, but I'm just saying, just so you understand it, we wouldn't wanna do that. So we'd wanna use words like, wow, you know, you know, what do you think about full lips? And maybe get some pictures, you know, of like, um, Obviously, the Kardashians are the first thing that come in mind, and I don't know if that's the most positive people I want to talk about. It might turn people off, but, you know, for the most part, most women would like stronger lips, and strong lips would definitely enhance her profile. So that's the words that I would be using here. I would never want to pull her lips backwards. I would never want to do IPR unless they had to on this patient. I would never want to pull teeth on this patient. So now you kind of know my thought process behind that. Let's talk about the E line. This is called the aesthetic line, okay? Now granted, when you take a profile pic, you're supposed to have the lips closed, okay? So I realized that she's smiling. Um, I'm using stock images here because I wanted to get the best pictures I could. But for the most part, you have some idea where the lips are falling and even without smiling, 
they're not going to go that much for, forward. So I always like to either mentally draw the E-line on patients, or I will actually take a screen grab and draw it. Okay, so the E-line, sorry, a little crooked here, it's, but it's a line that's going to go from the tip of the nose to the chin button. Okay, and ideally the lower lip should be, I mean, this is from Ricketts, so this is like ages ago, and I really actually think this is not necessarily accurate now. Patients actually like more enhanced lips instead of less enhanced lips, but the lower lip should be one, two to three millimeters behind the E-line. Upper lip should be one to two millimeters behind the E-line. I think I like to have the upper lip at the E-line and the lower lip a millimeter behind the E-line. That's my goal. It doesn't mean we can get there, but I tried to treat to that. So clear this patient is miles behind the E-line. So we do not want to make her go back more, right? Okay, here's another one. All kinds of profiles, right? So this patient actually has some very nice lips, okay, but it has no chin. So complete opposite of the other patient. That's why I put them together, okay? Definitely got has recessed pictures, okay? This patient probably has a class two bite. Um, we've got all this going on here. We don't like this, okay? So um, we'd like to have a stronger jawline. So there's a lot of things I'd like to do. If this patient was growing, I'd of course want to be advancing the mandible, but this patient's not. So, um, but just things to think about. I probably wouldn't necessarily want to bring the lips more forward on this case because the lower lip is definitely a little more forward than I'd like it to be relative to the chin and nose. And back in residency, when I was there, we were told sometimes when we had recessed features or strong features, we were told that we needed to recommend quote chin jobs and nose jobs. Now I don't do that. I wait for the patient to bring it up and we just, you know, talk about it because sometimes it comes up and sometimes it can really make the treatment blend much nicer and you can build it all into one big treatment plan. I'm not saying you're doing a nose job. I'm not saying you're doing a chin job, but for sure, um, there are oral surgeons that do do chin reductions, you know, genioplasty, genial enhancement. It's a big part of what they do. And it's actually a very affordable surgery or, you know, orthognathic surgery, which is a big part, jaw surgery of orthodontics. It doesn't mean that the GPs and pediatric dentists I'm working with are going to do that. Matter of fact, I don't recommend that, but there's a, that's a referral. That's a referral to ortho. And I always, always recommend that if you're taking a case for ortho that's going to be a compromised case, if you're not going to do it right, you, you can't do that. You have to at least send to ortho and have the patient get the full consult. They have to get all the options. You can't just give them one option, which is the easy option. You cannot assume that your patient wants to take the compromised option. Never make an assumption. You might get sued later. You should strongly encourage that the patient goes to the orthodontist and gets the full workup for the right treatment, like in this case. You know, what else do I think when I see this? I see this, I'm thinking this patient probably has OSA. So big chance, you know? I'm gonna do a sleep questionnaire on this patient. I'm gonna work them all up for that. And if there's concerns that I have, I'm not gonna do, say, upper by extraction on this case. No, I'm gonna strongly encourage this patient goes and gets the right treatment. And if they really want to compromise treatment, straightening only, then fine. At least they had, at least they had the full workup. At least if they had all their options covered, we're going to document all the options, say that they declined them, and that they're going to go with the compromise option, which is straightening only and not fixing the bite. We're going to talk about the risk benefits and alternatives. We're going to write them down and have the patient sign. And now you're protected. So got to do that. Can't just assume, okay? So we can talk about, we'll talk about the aesthetic line on this patient, but the other thing I want to talk about is just um, nasal label angles. So you want to look at the angle of the lip relative to the angle of the nose and how that kind of comes out. Obviously, I don't want to see obtuse. I'd like to see acute. This is about a 90 degree. I'm fine with this. Um, but things to look at, and oops, this got cut off a little bit. But remember, we talked about the E line and how. Um, We'd like to see the lower lip a couple millimeters behind, maybe two to three millimeters behind the upper lip, a millimeter or so behind. So this patient, like I said, because of the recessed chin and the recessed features, the lips are very prominent, which is fine, but we would not want to do something on this patient that would make the lips more prominent. Or we would want to consider doing the right thing, which is probably um, a mandibular advancement surgery, which would really help balance out his features and probably help his bite in his airway too. So just things to think about. Okay. Here's another patient has a very, what I call straight profile. This is fine. Um, strong chin button, a little bit of a steep mandibular plane angle might be a class three bite, might not be, might just have a chin. Um, I think this is a great look for a gentleman, maybe not for a female. Um, I'm fine with this, but again, 
looking at my virtual e-line, which probably goes from here to here, I would not want to make the lips go back on this patient. I would only want to make the lips go forward. And remember, as patients age, their lips are going to get smaller and come back more. That's why people get lip injections. So, um, and then again, that's another way you can enhance that too. Let's see what else we got. Um, let's take a look here. Okay. We've got this patient here. I love this profile here. I really, really love this profile. This is probably my favorite one of the day. This is just textbook perfect, exactly what we'd like to see. Again, her mouth is parted a little bit. We'd like to see it closed, but this is just perfect, harmonious profile. I think it looks pretty, and look, the E-line says it looks pretty too. So again, we wouldn't want to bring her features back. Just kind of leave it right where it is. All right, and then this is the same gentleman there. I think it's a different one, just showing um, nasal label angle being a little bit obtuse. And oh, here's our guy again. So same one we saw before, I got a little mixed up. But again, this is the E-line on him. I told you again, we do not want to pull those lips back. And yes, here's our girl again. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to show you. So just having you think a little bit more about soft tissue, about lip position, about nasal labial angles, and about E-lines. And let's be doing that on all your patients. And I think sometimes we get into this groove with our records, with our orthodontic records. We're taking these pictures, but why are we taking them? You know, why are we taking these pictures? We're taking the extra oral pictures for this reason. You know, other things I'm looking at in the ex in the profile pic, I'm looking at, um, looking at, mentalis strain. I'm looking, you know, at lip strain. I'm looking to see if the patient is lip competent. Are they trying to strain to get those lips around the teeth? And you see that a lot, you know, in class two patients, especially in kids, but also in adults where they literally have that kind of dog look where they, they're open all the time just because they have to struggle to get their lips around their teeth. And that's not right. That's, that is a sign that we need to do something about that. And we need to treat to improve that. And if this, that as a child, we're going to want to develop their musculature better so that they can accommodate it, right? We want to grow their musculature, enhance their musculature. If it's an adult, it's going to be a little more tricky. We might have to get the teeth to fit better around the soft tissue because obviously we're not going to grow the soft tissue in a non-growing adult. And again, last point that brings us to early treatment phase one, you need to be screening your little patients your fours, your fives, your sixes, your sevens. I'm not saying you're going to do something, but you're once you start getting into the groove of screening these patients, you're going to start finding patients that are extraordinarily deficient, um, just underdeveloped. And if you start early, you can make them look absolutely fantastic and function fantastic and feel fantastic and breathe fantastic. And often there's many other positive things that happen in their lives once you get their airway and their facial features balanced. It is not hocus pocus. This is totally true, okay? And most orthodontists believe this. Many pediatric dentists see this. And once you start to connect the dots on how everything is interrelated and how you have the ability to help kids, not just have them look prettier, but feel better, you will love doing phase one. So I want to encourage you to jump on our webinar, which is on November 5th, to learn a little bit more about phase one. I will also be having an actual hands-on phase one class in May 2020, so stay tuned. All right, thanks so much and have a great day.